All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Team here, and this is BXJS livestream. Um, some of you guys were interested in how I set up my Windows subsystem for Linux, Windows 10 distribution, I guess, to work because this is what I use daily for the most part. There's like some caveats here that apply when I have to crack open my old MacBook and use that. But um, now that we are actually having Windows subsystem for Linux version 2 out, so it's now generally available, the Microsoft just released the Windows 2020 May update yesterday, I believe. Um, you should be getting it through settings. So like if you go into settings in your machine, uh, you should basically see the update. If you don't see it, you can go to the update assistant, download that. This is what I did because I think they're basically doing the rolling update. So not everyone gets it at the same time. You can force it by just running the update assistant and then you will get it immediately. Uh, it takes about 20 minutes to install at least, you know, on my machine with SSD and 16 gigs of RAM. No problem so far, seems to be working quite well. And I've already updated everything that is needed for the VSL 2 to work. Uh, hey Francis, welcome to the stream. All right, so yes, as I said, I already installed all the required things um, for VSL because I, you know, I don't want to, uh, the thing is that installing some of them requires rebooting. So I did that pre-stream, which, you know, kind of would be a bit bad to just interrupt the stream to reboot the computer, I think. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so the VSL2 is installed, as you can see here, we got the Ubuntu machine uh, with, that uses version 2. This is new, fresh installed, there is nothing in there, so I just installed it and made sure that it actually works. And during the stream, I will be basically setting it up for my daily work, so what I uh, typically do, what I typically use there, what I typically need there. So we're going to be going through that, and... Uh, that's, yeah, that's literally it. So I don't really have anything else to say here. So I'm just going to fire up uh, another tab here. So this is going to start VSL2 for us. That was actually really damn fast. So in comparison to the uh, VSL1, I remember that taking like a few noticeable seconds. Here it's almost immediate, even though the machine was stopped, which is just bonkers. But anyway, so we got, um, this should be Ubuntu 2020 or something. Uh, yeah, okay, that's fine. Um... Okay, so again, this is just Ubuntu from the Microsoft Store, so nothing in there. So we're going to start by, I guess, just doing sudo opt update and then just doing sudo opt upgrade because it makes sense to, you know, fetch all the latest packages before we start diving into all the stuff. Upgrade, there we go. That is quite a bit. That is really fast. Like already, I, again, you know, VSL1, it's not exactly the fastest thing when it comes down to the um, file system, as you already might know. But this, man, this looks and feels pretty, pretty damn good already. I'm really curious to see how the NPM and Node will behave because this was sort of the biggest pain points. You know, while Yarn was okay-ish, NPM and Node was kind of on a slow end, even in comparison to like old MacBook that has hard drive in there, but bleh. Uh, hey, Wise, welcome to the stream. All right, so we got that. Uh, I'm going to kill the PowerShell because I don't think we need it anymore. I guess I can make this a bit larger so that everyone can see what's going on. Uh, yes, this is a new terminal for Windows. This is the Windows Terminal version 1 that they released. Yeah, I've been using it since version 0.6, I think, or something like that. It's amazing. The version 1 is even better. It works perfectly well with uh, VSL, and you can have, like, multiple different distros if you want. You can have PowerShell, CMD whatever the hell you basically want. It works really, really well. Uh, Sir, your beard, is <laughs> your beard is looking magnificent. Thank you. I probably should shave at some point, but I've been so lazy about that. Uh, hey, Gorkham, welcome to the stream. Um, let, me, let me try to read your username. Gaiman Metkis. Hey, Gaiman Metkis. I hope that's correct. <laughs> oh, man. Why do you have to pick usernames that are so hard to read? God damn it. Anyway, um, all right, so we updated the core stuff. Let us start by um, sudo apt install Dutch. Okay, that, that explains everything. Dutch language always seems very strange for people who don't speak it. <laughs> At least that's my perspective. Um, sudo apt install. So what do we want? We want Git. We want build essentials, right? I don't know if they are pre installed here or not and I want Z shell so I do not do anything without Z shell 
Are you going to use NVM? Uh, I probably will install NVM because there are some cases where I essentially want to fall back to the older versions of Node and it's just easier to do with NVM. So I think I will add it um, during the stream. Okay. That, yeah, I mean, man, this is really damn fast. Like the performance of this thing is just insane in comparison to the VSL one. Again, you know, it's not, not exactly, <laughs> doesn't exactly need to be that much difference, but uh, yeah. All right, so we got that, we got Git. Um, let's let's install. So the next thing I typically go for is oh my Z shell. That is my preferred config. Install all my Z shell. Yes, there you go. So I'm just gonna run this command. Ruby. I don't really use Ruby that much. I think last time I've used it was when I wrote my thesis in university back in 2007. So uh, yeah, no, I don't think we're gonna use Ruby. What are the improvements in VSL2 except the speed? So VSL2 uses real Linux kernel. Like the VSL1 was sort of like wine, but reverse, right? So it basically simulated the, uh, it, it translated the calls that the Linux apps did to the Linux and converted them to the Windows API calls, which was, which worked okay in some cases, but purely because there is too many complexities in the Linux core and there's like different bugs and old things and polyfills and whatever. It was really hard to make it work one-to-one -one, uh, plus the file system is annoying, right? And uh, VSL2 basically just puts in the proper Linux kernel. So I literally installed the kernel uh, before installing the Ubuntu version and it just runs all the calls through the Linux kernel. So you have like a full on Linux running inside of Windows. Uh, why don't you use Node on Windows? Uh, I do use Node on Windows sometimes, but I prefer to have it on the Linux side because there are some things that are just easier, like, you know, having Docker there, having Git on a command line. Um, Windows command line is still has ways to go in comparison to the Z shell, for example, right? Uh, I missed the start of the stream. How do we get started with migrating? So what I did is I essentially just wiped everything and installed it in U, but uh, Microsoft has this very handy uh, article that basically says, okay, so you need to like run this, run that. And then if you download new thing, then you just download. And if you already have a distribution, you can just say VSL set version, then distribution name and version number. So in this case, it will be VSL set version Ubuntu and then the version two, and this will convert it to version two. Uh, before doing that, uh, if you are gonna upgrade your stuff, make sure, uh, let me just increase that. So there is VSL, um, import and export commands now. So you can actually do VSL export your existing distro and then just save it to file name, right? So you just dump it to tar. In this case, if you upgrade and something dies, you can just restore it easily. Okay, let me have a look at the chat. Uh, does the NPM link packages work? So, okay, it's, I mean, they even worked fine in the uh, VSL one. So I don't think that should be a problem in VSL two. Probably we're, we're gonna test it. Let me see, did they improve file system management uh, like to list files in VSL with Windows Explorer? I think it should work. So we're, we're, I think you can just do that, right? Yeah, there you go. No, you can't, <laughs> wait a second. What was it, like this? Yeah, there you go. Uh, so I can, you literally have the network mount that is called VSL Ubuntu now, and you have the full access to this. Damn, that's really cool. <laughs> you can literally access the whole file system. Okay, this is really awesome. Uh, you know what's interesting to me? Yeah, you now have correct permissions. So this was one of my gripes with VSL1. And basically in VSL1, it created all the files, folders and everything with uh, like full read, write, execute permissions for every file, every folder, um, projects. And it always was 777, which made this highlighted in green, which was annoying as hell. So. Great to see that it's actually a proper file system and it actually works good now. Okay, um, anyway, I am getting distracted as hell. Let me think, what do I need? So we installed Build Essentials, we installed Git, we installed Z shell. Uh, yeah, okay, I will configure the theme for my, I mean, uh, you know what? We can probably tweak the Z RC for now. So I use, um, I use, what do you call it? Honukai, I think was the, Okay, Z shell theme, right? So this is my favorite theme for the Z shell. What is going on? Use dots, yep. Use Arch. Uh, I mean, you know, if you want to use Arch, go for it. It's a pretty nice Linux, but for my, like I prefer to use 
whatever requires the least effort from my side, which is either Debian if I want a server Linux or Ubuntu if I want the home one. Ubuntu LTS specifically because non-LTS Ubuntu tends to be a pretty damn huge mess. Okay, uh, so let me download this. So I need to drop it. Okay, um, ta -ta 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 I'm gonna say Onukai over here, exit this, and then we go into oh my Z shell custom themes and we do vjet that should do it right okay um so i go to the home deer and then i say source z shell rc and that should apply our and uh, i don't think it did but okay it's fine whatever uh, i mean i guess i can just relaunch the i think yeah i think it did apply it okay cool so we got that going i remember i have to use some other plugins for Z-Shell, but you know what? It's not really important right now. We can just edit the Z-Shell RC or to see what else do we have here. Uh, I don't remember, do I need anything else here? So we got the, oh yeah, so we got the plugins. Hell if I remember which plugins I typically enable. I think there was like a bunch of them. Um, da -da -da, on my Z-Shell plugins. All right, so what do we have here? Oh, holy shit. <laughs> Last time I checked, there was not that many. Okay, I guess I need the VS codes to actually figure out which plugins I want to use. Uh, so let me just dock that over here. I'm going to copy all of that. Uh, VS code is not yet integrated into my new um, installation of the VSL, so I cannot just run code there. But right, I guess, you know what? I'm going to do it in a different way. I'm just going to do that. No, not that. I want to do this, right? And then I'm just gonna copy this whole thing and come on. Um, there's a lot of fly. I probably don't need like half of them, but you know what? Let's just go through that. So uh, luckily for me, this is all exactly the same. So I'm just gonna do that. I probably should, you know what? What was it? I'll, uh, control shift, no, no. What's the button select all instances? Um, and I can do just this, I think, right? Yeah, there we go, that works. Okay, cool. Right, so, okay, almost all of them, that's good. Uh, let me have a look at the chat. Uh, to, 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 uh, okay, let me just make the chat a bit bigger. Um, to, 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 to clean start, I just need to uninstall the current Debian. Yes, you basically uninstall the uh, current version, I think it's VSL minus minus unregister, and then you remove the distro, and then you just install everything you want to VSL, you run the set default version two, and you install it again, and it works fine. That was relatively easy. Um, you can forward X11. Yes, you can forward X11. And uh, the Microsoft announced that they have a plans to actually add X11 as the uh, part, like I guess, you know, Linux app rendering as the part of VSL2, which is freaking fantastic. Like, all right, let's see. So ADB, I don't need that. I don't care about Melius um, Finder. I don't need Ansible. And don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. SDF, I think. Uh, no, no, I'm fine with that. I maybe re-enable them later at some point. Branch Brew, don't need any of that. Uh, cargo, yes. So we definitely want Cargo because I am planning on using... Uh, I'm planning on using... Um, uh, not Ruby, Rust at some point. So we don't care about cask, we don't need celery. This is Chuck Norris, hell if I know what is that. <laughs> Cloud app, okay, whatever, we don't need that. Uh, so we do need command not found and common aliases. Those are handy if I remember correctly. Right, so we got that. Um, we do want complete, which is the uh, fixing thing for completion. So I don't know if I need any of those. I think they have a specific plugin for Ubuntu. So I do want Docker stuff. Uh, I think I can actually split it and do it like line, line by line, if I remember correctly. I think that should work. So, okay, git, yes, uh, just move it over. Yeah, we know what, whatever, that doesn't even matter right now. Okay, got Docker, Docker Compose, Docker Machine, that looks fine. Okay, what else? Uh, dot env, that is whatever. Emacs, em I, mean, yeah, I should probably learn Emacs at some point. I never tried it in my life. <laughs> yes, fastd is great. I want that. Um, Fedora, no, 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 no. 
Okay, git, yes, git auto fetch. What the hell is that? Okay, that is a ton of different things and I have no idea what they do. Okay, we definitely want git extras because I remember using that. I don't remember what, again, what this plugin does, but I'll take it. Uh, git prompt, git hub flow, git fast, git hub. Uh, yes, git hub. I don't know what that does, but I'll take it. Git ignore, yes, please. Don't waste time learning Emacs. Vim is the best. I I mean, Vim is okay, but you know, I don't, I won't say I'm an expert in it. So I'm not particularly good at it. Like I can edit stuff. I can, uh, I can uh, exit it. That's the most important skill, right? <laughs> but I, I don't know. Like, I, I'm just really curious uh, what is Emacs because I've heard that so many, like, you know, holy wars between the Emacs and uh, Vim users. But I never tried it actually. <laughs> Just started learning Emacs and it's fantastic. Okay, cool. I definitely need to try that. Okay, so Gradle, I thank God I don't need any Java stuff. Uh, history, yes, I want those things. So homestand HTTPI, yes, that is a good library. I want that. Whoops, I did I exit the, yes, I exit the insert mode. I turn to no, do, 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 Druby, no, 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 no. Keychain, I don't have a keychain knife. Cube, I don't think I will use cube here. Uh, man, okay, Mercurial, no, 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 no. Okay, there we go, we got Node.js, we got npm, npx, and vm. Okay, so we need all of those. Um, ten, 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 ten. Um, Tim, are you planning to say a word or two about the plugins you choose? Um, I mean, it's mostly what I already use. So there's like Cargo is the Rust plugin. Uh, command not found is basically the plugin that suggests, if I remember correctly, it suggests the relevant commands that when you type something wrong, uh, common aliases is just as it says, complete is the thing that fixes typos, um, Docker, Docker compose, Docker machine is Docker related things, Git is, you know, Git related, Golang is just auto completion for Golang, history and substring search is just a nice way to search history. And this is just auto completion for like node npm npx and vm whatever so there's nothing super complex about those plugins really are you going to install docker yes i am going to install docker i'm not going to use the docker for windows i'm actually planning to install the docker inside vsl because i want it to be isolated and basically when i play video games i want it to only run in vsl so i can just shut it down and forget about it basically okay let's see um I don't think I need Python for now, maybe later. So that's fine. Rails rake, so we don't need any. Oh, there's React Native. Okay, that's a React Native plugin. I'll take that. I don't know what it does, but <laughs> you know what? That's fine. Rust RVM. All right, yes. So we need Rust and Rust up in addition to Cargo because I need Rust. We want, do, 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 do. okay, I don't think I need any of that. I probably need a SSH agent. We gotta set it up. So sublime, whatever, sudo, yes, please. Um, SVN is not something I need. Systemd, uh, does it have a system? Here's a question, do we have a systemd? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna find it out in a second. Terraform, yes, I do use Terraform. Uh, oh yeah, this is one of my favorite things is the fuck. This is like the best thing ever. If you never heard about this alias and you are using the command line, um, just, you know, just, find it it's a magnificent app as it says this literally allows you so when you mistype the command right and it says hey did you mean something you can just type fuck and it will fix the command for you it's amazing <laughs> so this is literally the best plugin out there um all right continuing let me have a look at the chat how do you know when vsl is completely shut down um like you can so if you run the powershell you can run the VSL list verbose and it will tell you what the state is. You can also run VSL, um, I think it's terminate. No, you can run, yeah, you can run terminate for a specific distro or you can just say VSL shutdown to shut down everything. So this is basically the nice way of just closing it down uh, without, you know, caring too much. Okay, I don't need Tmux. Uh, yeah, there we go. We need Ubuntu. Whoops, that is a wrong, where's my window? There we go. So we need Ubuntu, no system D. Uh, I mean, okay, we'll find out in a second. It's not that I need it really much, but 
Okay, we don't need that. A Vim interaction. We don't need that. VS Code, yes, please. Oh, there's now a VS Code plugin. Man, I should revisit my Z Shell config at some point because there seems to be like a ton of new plugins that I never kn knew about. I do want Yarn and I think Z Shell Interactive CD, yes, please. Uh, Z Shell Navigation Tools, I don't know what this is and I don't know what is Z Shell Reload. Okay, you know what? That's fine. So that seems to be okay. What else do we have here? Blah, blah, blah. There's some flags. Okay, cool. So we got some additional stuff. I, oh yeah, I still need to pull my dot files, but we can do that later. It's not important. Source ZShellRC, we just source that. And there is, um, all right. So we got MPX plugin, no such file bad interp. Oh, 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 right. Okay. <laughs> so we broke the MPX plugin because it picked up the Node.js um from the windows right because i do have node installed on the windows side so it was just like hey i cannot access this pass which makes perfect sense um z shell auto suggestions so i use the z shell plugins but i don't remember which ones i would need to look into my uh, dot files but we can like this is not critical now anyway let's start by so we don't need that let's start by you know what i'm just first i'm gonna do let's start by installing the node.js right so node.js, we need node.js org and we need downloads and we need uh, current and there is, uh, where's the, I'm always like, yeah, there we go, package manager and we want Debian and Ubuntu. So, right, it's like 25 links to click to find the damn distros for Ubuntu. Okay, um, there we go, node 14, so we, insert this stuff into our sources. I mean, NVM is nice, but I also prefer to have the latest version installed system-wide because then it just updates basically. So it's a bit nicer than NP NVM, but we are gonna install NVM as well. Again, man, I am blown away by the speed of this thing. Like this is so much faster than the uh, SL1. This is just amazing. Cool, so theoretically, this should now be node 14.3, cool. And if I source uh, Z shell RC, nope, it's still, it's still breaking. It's still, okay, it's still breaking for some. Cannot access SSH environment light desk and key. What is that? SSH, oh, there's no, okay, main dear SSH. Well, oh, no, that's not what I want. Um, yeah, that's not a folder I need. So what, what is what is happening? What do you not like here? Okay, the fuck is not installed. Peep install fuck. Okay, oh man, all right. I need the I need to install the tool itself. Okay, cool. Uh, we can do that. You can also see that exactly two gigabytes of RAM is taken in. in yeah, really? There's they now show the VSL and Task Manager. Uh, let me see Windows Security Host. So where do you actually see that? I see the ver is that the virtual that no virtual desktop is the virtual desktop that's not it. Uh, Microsoft oh yeah there you go Microsoft Windows subsystem for Linux. There's a bunch of files here but background host but they don't even take like this is super tiny this seems like it's a services. I don't know how do you actually see the the um. I know that it's shown in the services but I don't think services actually show any additional data. Did you copy Windows New Lines? Uh, no, I did not. I don't think so. Um, da, da, da. Use X410. Yes, I am using X410. I do have it. I even like I bought it whenever it was on sale. It's pretty good. Again, I'm still waiting for the Microsoft to release the official thing because it's uh, quite a bit better. Anyhow, okay. So the fuck needs Python. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna disable it for now because I don't want to bother with installing Python right now. So where is my? Come on. Uh, like, yes, the fuck, I like you, but I will not spend time on Python right now. So let me just, uh, right, okay, cool. So now we're working, no more errors. We got node installed, we got npm. You know what, I'm gonna do that. Nope, sorry, not that. That was a wrong thing, npm install minus g npm latest. So I'm just gonna bump the npm to whatever the latest version is. And we're also gonna check the speed of that thing, by the way. Uh, missing right X. Oh, right. Okay. This is one thing. NPM, no 
sudo. So I, um, da, da, da. I remember that by default, npm requires you to run it with sudo, which is nah, not really good. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a prefix. Yes, npm make dear. So we're going to create this npm global thing and just say that this is our prefix, right? Cool. Pm minus uh, npm i minus g npm latest. There we go. So that should start working now, right? Okay, that's pretty fast. Yeah, that's a lot faster than it was before. Okay, cool. npm minus v. Okay, good. We're rolling. We got the node. Yarn. Yarn is a good idea. I do want to install it. I want to install yarn one. So I'm, I haven't actually jumped on the yarn two bandwagon yet. Probably should try it at some point, but I don't know. Uh, my great, can I, where's the yarn one? Yes. Can you please show me the classic yarn? Because I prefer that. I mean, I don't even know if I need that. It seems like the NPM works fast enough. So we want uh, Ubuntu. There we go. Okay. You know what? Why not? Let's just install it. Um, I think I use it in some projects anyway, like um, Exoframe or whatever. It's good to have that. So add it to sources, sudo apt update, and then sudo opt install yarn. There we go. Cool. Okay. So we got yarn. Man, I really dig in this bit of this. Okay, cool. So we got the yarn. Yarn versus npm seems ultimately fruitless. I mean, yeah, that's that's a very fair point. I think the npm version seven is going to be a lot better than the current one, and possibly better than yarn. Like, I'm I'm really curious to see the approach they will take uh, with you know the the, the whole like uh, node module less way of doing things. I don't know if they have that in plan, but I'm guessing they do. And also the whole compatibility with Deno thing, because I'm I'm pretty sure it's coming at some point. But yeah, okay, so we got the node, we got the yarn, we got the git, NVM. Right, NVM. Let us install NVM. I mean, that should be relatively easy, right? It's just a bunch of shell scripts, essentially. So curl, yes, let's run commands from internet in our command line and hope they do the right thing. Okay, so we need to add this into our Z shell RC. Just add them and we got this is going to be NVM. We're going to paste it here. Uh, whoops, it is all commented out. That is not how it should be. Yep, that looks good. Source Z shell RC. NVM ls. There we go. Okay, cool. NVM list aliases. Uh, no matches found. Okay, that's fine. I guess. Why are you complaining about those things? You know what? That's fine. So NVM works now. I guess we can. Um, what was it? Less remote, I think. Uh, boy, no, that's too much. Version 12, I think 12. Oh, God damn it. I wanted to do this. Okay. Right. Uh, so we want. Oh, no, no, no. That's a wrong button. I want this. NVM install. I think you can do this, right? So you can basically say, uh, no, not Erbium. Was it LTS Erbium? Uh, what was the name for that? Um, uh, wait a second. MVM, MVM install minus minus LTS. Oh, okay. So it's just basically, oh, cool. I didn't know about that. Thank you. That is a very handy command. Cool. Okay. Right. So it's basically not gonna default to it. MVM use LTS. I assume. No. Okay. MVM, uh, I guess. Okay. MVM use stable should work, right? There we go. Node my oh right it will complain about the prefix but uh, that is that is fine and VM use delete prefix okay yeah yeah sure sure okay that's fine so NVM works I I mean I guess we can just try it with this right so NVM delete prefix and I can say uh, stable right so that should work whoa well, what is this quote doing there no 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 let me say so delete that and that should be no minus v okay and pm my uh with minus v cool nvm use system so now we should fall back to the node.js yeah there we go so now we're running on the system version great nvm works without any issues uh something i've been doing with vsl2 plus x410 is using sublime 3 it turns uh i mean sublime is nice but why would you want like so the thing is that i found the perfect setup for me is running code 
on the windows and then just using their remote extension to actually tap into the VSL. And this is actually what we are going to do now. Um, now, where was this remote thing? If I remember, this was right remote. There we go, remote explorer. There's not containers, VSL targets, there we go. Ubuntu, yes, and uh, this seems to be old stuff. How do I plus? Yeah, uh, no, just hey, just show me something. Come on, go away. Okay, no, this opens the distros. Hell, if I remember how to configure code and uh, code remote VSL, I did it so long ago. I don't even remember how to do this properly. <laughs> okay, we did install that. We did install VS, VS codes on the Windows side. Install the remote development extension pack. I think I have that. Uh, remote development VSL, there we go. Open a VSL terminal window, navigate to a folder, type code dot. So wait, is it just automatically taps into that? Uh, CD projects, make dear, test, test codes. Oh, okay, that, that is amazing. Let me just give it to them. Like this is just frictionless experience. This is really cool. Okay, and we now have it with terminal and everything, right? Yeah, sweet. Okay, that was that was a lot easier than I expected. All right, cool. So we got that. Um, let's try. So before we continue with the whole thing, let me just um, let me just do the very basic thing. PM init minus y npm install express const express. Require Express. Um, hell, if I remember how to do the Express app, let me just get the tutorial thingy. Um, ta -da -da, hello world. So I just basically want to run and see, because I remember reading that the um, VSL essentially doesn't bind to localhost, right? So we'll actually run on a different IP. Um, ta -da -da. I I think it actually gave, okay, you know what, whatever, it doesn't matter. So node index, right, there we go. And if I go into localhost 3000, that, no, it does, okay, so it does, I guess they fixed that, so they automatically root the VSL into the localhost. All right, cool. <laughs> that is getting better and better. I remember reading at some point that they basically said that, okay, you, you will have to deal with the uh, non local host IP, which is, you know, not a big deal, but just slightly annoying. But okay, so we did that. Uh, we want to install Docker now. So uh, Docker, 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 get start with Docker, uh, Docker desktop. No, I don't want Docker desktop. I want Docker new Linux engine. There we go. This is what we want. Uh, that is not what I want. Docker install Ubuntu is what I want. Why do they never link to the correct things? Okay, um, doo -doo -doo. okay, we don't need to remove anything because we don't have anything. So install the required packages. I really dig in the speed of this thing. Holy shit. Okay, uh, add the GPG key. Yeah, sure. Now, if you run up get Docker, it's going to install the old crappy version. And I think it's actually Docker IO. So the Docker is something different. But uh, okay, the opposite. What do you mean by the opposite way? I mean, if it's routing from the VSL to the Windows, it works fine. You mean accessing Windows from the VSL? I can live without that, that's, that's perfectly fine. I don't think I ever needed to do that actually. Okay, cool. Uh, so we run updates and then we install the, yeah, okay. If that works, then I basically have everything I need in one nice package. You also bind to zero, zero, zero. I guess, I mean, I assume if you bind to zero. So basically the thing is that the Linux, the, the VSL has its own network, right? So I'm, I'm just guessing they configured the automatic routing from the VSL to localhost. I don't know if that is exposed via zero, zero, zero is a good question, but I don't have a cases where I basically um, I have to care about that. What do you want? Grab PC package being installed allows you to select which devices you like to. Um, I don't. I don't want any of those. Like, okay, I guess this DA just. I mean, I mean, can I just say okay? Yes. Do not install Grab. I don't care about Grab. Like, this is not a place where I want Grab installed. <laughs> okay. You know what? It's fine. Why did I even try to install Grab? 
I guess it's one of the dependencies or something. Okay. Okay, blah, blah, blah. So failed to auto generate temporary MDAMD conf file. MD subsystem is not loaded. Okay, so there we go. We got the first VSL2 install Docker diamond. I assume there's something missing. Uh, Docker is not really virtualization, right? So it's not really virtualization within virtualization. It's containerization within virtualization. So it's a slightly different thing. Okay. Uh, do you plan on utilizing Postman? Uh, I'm not really using Postman that much. I prefer command line tools or just writing my own tiny scripts. Postman Newman is short if you want a clear approach. Okay, the, I like command line tools, so I'm gonna uh, open that here. So enable Hyper-V, install VSL2, we did that uh, Docker version. I mean, I don't have it installed there, right? So this Docker, I, I assume, okay, so the command line installed, but the daemon fails. Docker, uh, starting up, Docker D needs to, okay, sudo Docker D. Okay, so the daemon actually starts as well, so it's just failed during the config or something? Uh, ta -da -da, GBG key, stable repository, update docker C, check docker version, docker status. But why did it fail? Did I, did I need to install the grub or something? Um, okay, let's try. So we need to, we don't need CLI, we need this, right? If I reinstall that and reconfigure the... Uh, So what exactly fails? Is it Docker C that fails or what? Triggers. Oh, does it work now? Right. Okay. I am not. No, cannot connect. Okay. So it did install this. So why does it? Why are you failing? Um, I guess let's try googling that error that I get. MD subsystem is not loaded. VSL to Docker. Let's see that. Um, okay, let me see the messages. Is it free update for version? Uh, yes. So you basically need to be on the version 2004. You go to the, uh, no, that's a wrong place. I think system about. You should see that the uh, Windows is version 2004. And yeah, then it basically should start working. So it's, yeah, it's exactly 19041. That's right. So this is perfectly correct. Okay, so what is uh, MD subsystem is not loaded. Like it doesn't seem like anyone. Oh no, there is some. Okay, someone has this error. What is this error? No, that blah blah blah. blah. Chance of working. I've read the latest preview of Windows. Switch to Linux container and Docker settings. Uh, da -da -da. Thanks for the feedback. Tool been updated a lot. Install Docker Hub images into VSL VSL2 directly. VSLD is a tool for downloading and installing Docker images into... Oh, okay. So somebody made a tool that allows you to install a Docker image as a distro. <laughs> that's cool, but that's not what we want. Um, so what the hell is Docker MD system is not loaded? This I cannot scan for a rate. How does... What shit is this? What does this even mean? Fail to auto generate temporary... Okay, so I got a bunch of errors. and I have no idea what they do and what they mean. But it seems like the Docker, so, um, so what do we need? Service, sir, um, yeah. List. Da, da, da. But wait a second. Oh man, I don't remember how to use. Okay, system control is not there. Docker. We use that. Yeah, okay, so if I do start here. Okay, so I guess it's just something that went wrong during the config, but it actually seems to be working now. Yep, okay, um, right. So, okay, uh, ta -ta -ta. now I need to add myself to the Docker group, right? Um, Linux add user to group. Yes, I never, like, <laughs> it's already purple because I visited that link like 25 times sudo user mods minus uh what was it minus a minus g docker and myself okay i need to restart that right 
and make it a bit bigger docker ps minus a hey cool docker so what was the um test thing that they uh, ask you to run docker run hello world there we go so i think that should work now right sweet that works perfectly fine that is that is amazing so i can now run docker right in my vsl and when i don't need it i can shut everything down with one command which is freaking awesome okay cool so we got the node we got docker um let me think we got code running what else do i need uh i need rust installed because i like to play oh yes i need deno as well and i think the deno installation is probably the easiest one we just do that right and it will pull it and it will basically put it into our bin and that's basically it eh, what unzip not found i can't damn it sudo opt install unzip was it unzip or just zip okay cool now let's try that again uh the update is free for windows 10 users yeah the update is absolutely free it's just another windows update. Uh, it does have a, quite a bunch of features but uh so you can it should theoretically i already said this in the beginning it should theoretically come through the settings panel so if you go to updates it should see there but if you're not you can use the upgrade assistant that will basically force it okay then a version uh then are not found uh all right okay we need to add this to the path yeah okay right vim z shell rc so insert this then no right okay uh. right that looks good um so source z shell rc then no version yes then is now installed okay cool rust uh no not the rust game rust language there we go is the memory limited in vsln if there are many containers what will happen um I, I don't think it's actually limited i mean it's probably limited to your real memory right i have like 16 gigs we're currently using eight with like the streaming and everything running um the vsl right now uses well basically nothing <laughs> it's just like a few megabytes which is amazing to be honest uh but we can we can try to run some heavy stuff and see how it goes like obviously the the obvious the obvious limitations of vsl2 right now is that it doesn't have any gpu access if i remember correctly they are planning to add this to allow like for stuff like cuda and everything which is uh pretty damn cool okay vsl all right so we can just do rust up yeah i'll take that uh proceed with default installation yeah sure just install whatever you have cargo rust c yeah cool it works uh you should charge for vmm what is vmm uh doo -doo -doo -doo. uh you are adding the so i'm adding to the z shell rc everything that you would basically add to bash rc if you use bash it's you know the same purpose it just bootstraps some stuff um bootstraps some stuff uh for for the loading yeah i mean so see it allocated the 12 gigs uh to the vsl i guess it limits something for the windows itself so it doesn't go overboard but you basically get almost everything that you have hey carlos welcome to the stream yes i have removed the vsl one so essentially what i did was i um i need to increase the size of it i used vsl exports um i mean i probably can do this vsl export so i did the export thing right this saved my vsl1 installation in, the, in a tar file and then i just wiped it and installed the new uh version you can upgrade if you want to i just decided that i had so much crap in the first version that i would just wipe everything and uh yeah vmm vmm not found what is what is trying with np oh npx plugin basically tries to run stuff with npx interesting not sure i want that to be honest <laughs> Right, I figured out what the Z shell um, NPX plugin does and I don't like it. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm gonna do that. No, 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 no. That seems dangerous as hell. I'm not gonna run random arbitrary things from um, <laughs> from NPM. No, 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 thank you. Okay. Why do you know? Don't try it with NPX. Did I command the wrong thing? um ta -da -da. no i didn't okay cool so that should be fine 
Okay, cool. Any not trying to do that anymore? Um, yeah, mem. So you are saying that you should search for VM mem in Task Manager. Okay. Let me see. Da -da -da. Oh, there we go. Okay, four gigs. Well, it's still not too bad. So it's like, I mean, obviously more than a, than I initially thought. But you know, that's not too bad considering what we have right now. Um, do we have it? Oh yeah, we have HTOP installed. Uh, what do we have? What is what is eating our most of the memory is VS Code. Okay, obviously it's VS Code. Yeah, right. Okay, so cool. I mean, that's not too terrible. That's fine. I'm planning to add like 16 more gigs of RAM to my computer because it's, you know, I want it to be a bit faster than it is right now. But uh, so we installed Rust. I should now have Rust C, right? Yeah, okay, cool. We got the Rust cargo. This works. Cool. Um, I guess the good test would be to see if I can just uh, run and debug Exoframe here. So let's do that. Apt install MC. Uh, what is MC is the midnight command, right? I never used that. I never understood why, like, why would I want that? So get clone. Uh, no, that should be in the projects folder. Um, make dear. Let's go to Exoframe. Do that. Get clone into Exoframe. Exoframe CLI. Let's call it this way. Yes. And right, I don't have my shell keys here. Yikes. Okay, where do I have them? I think. Uh, so I already created the SSH here, all right? And. Oh, why? Where do I have my. I think I had them in my. Uh, downloads or something was it here oh boy all this green stuff uh no not here was it just in the root folder i remember i copied them somewhere but hell if i i mean i have them in the backup in the worst case scenario but i feel like it should be somewhere here listen founder annotation no 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 where did I put them? Is it in documents? Oh my God. Right. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to do explore mount C users, my user folder. And let's have a look. So this is crap documents, no downloads, uh, back. What is back folder? No, that's my phone stuff. ESL. No, where did I put them? Did I just wipe my own? This I mean, I have the backup, but is it possible to forward the SSH folder from Windows, dear? I mean, it should be possible, but you would have permissions issue most likely because the Linux SSH wants very specific things. So let me let me see. Where could I have put that? So it's not in the root folder. It's not in the documents. Oh, I think I put it into my projects folders in Windows. There we go. There they are. Okay. Um. So I can just do, I mean, I don't need all, I mean, I guess I can just do that with all of them, right? So we can do explorer exe this folder. I really like that I can do that. And then I can just say, take all of that and throw them in there, right? Uh, skip file. I guess that was known hosts. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. So we unpack them. Um, probably, no, permissions are even fine. Okay, cool. It preserved permissions. Holy crap. Okay, projects. Um, fzf not found uh, okay Adopt. okay there's like a bunch of tools that i forgot to install along with the z shell plugins um yes i want exoframe thank you very much uh okay git clone um i could probably do that there we go warning unprotected file key okay yes so permissions are definitely screwed up Sage, okay, mod, what, what is it should be 744, I think, or is it 644, I think, right? This, uh, was it 644 or what? Uh, private, okay, um, SSH file permissions. I don't remember which permissions it should have. Is it 644 or something more strict? Uh, 700. Oh, okay. So public key 644, private key 600. Okay. 
600 for ID RSA, 600 for ID RSA, um, uh, this and this, and ID ED, yep, yeah, okay. I think that looks good. All right, let's try this again. Exo frame, right, yes, and now git clone. Are we good now? Yeah, there we go. There's my passphrase quest. Okay, I need to configure so that it doesn't ask me for passphrases every time. <laughs> that would be nice. All right, let's see how long does that take. So in the VSL one, that took quite a few minutes. It's basically like two, three minutes, I guess. Uh, I mean, Exoframe is a relatively large project, so uh, I think it's, this is already faster because it's almost done, basically. Yeah, okay. 20 seconds, not bad. I think it was like, yeah, about 80, 90 seconds on the VSL one, so that's great. Okay, MPM, I think we want, um, MPM link is what I want, right? Yeah, oh, 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 what is going on? Oh, oh, we deleted the, ah, oh, man, okay. I think, so basically NVM deleted the prefix, right? We want that, and if I go here, so I changed the owner to Yamalite. Uh, what is my group actually? Yamalite, Yamalite. Okay, so change owner to Yamalite, Yamalite, and we will change it for this, and we will change it recursively. Uh, oh God! All right, should be pseudo. There we go. I think now it should work. Frame clear. Okay, npm link. Are you working now? So then I don't need to have this prefix and whatever and NVM will work out of the box. Uh, no such directory lib exoframe dist index. Um, all right, I probably should have uh, need to build it first, right? And I don't remember, <laughs> don't remember how to how to work with things anymore. Uh, right, yarn. Okay, so npm run builds is what we want to do. Okay. Right, so we first have to build the actually the binary and then link it npm link. Cool, so that should work. Come on now. But yeah, the speed is like a lot better. Eh, what? Permission denied lib node modules dist. Permission denied sim link. What is what is happening? Uh, bin ex oh oh oh, it tries to write into bin exo frame. Uh, that's fine. I mean. Like, so if I ls user, the so bin is owned by root root. I don't want to rewrite that into my own thing. But then again, I guess it doesn't matter that much. I really would prefer to have like, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna run the same thing. npm, what was it? Where is my command for? Yeah, there we go. So I'm just gonna do that, right? And then basically this should be npm link. So now it should work because it's no longer global. I, I should have done this from the very beginning. Just easier to work like this. And we need to add this bin to our Z shell RC or to path actually. Well, no, 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 that's not what I want. Um, we want it over here. So NVM, let me add it somewhere here, I guess. NPM bin path. So export path and it's going to be this. And then we're going to have path again and that should do it. Okay, uh, source, shall I see? Yes. Why is it adding a okay? You know what? I want to oh right, because I probably have the right. I, I added the Z shell plugin for the agent. Okay, cool. Right, I'm missing my git aliases as well. <laughs> okay, MP all right. So I linked it, which means that exoframe version. So we now should have access to this. Cool. And now we should be able to go to exoframe and then git clone. So let's try this. I'm more interested in exoframe server right now because it's a very complex piece of software that uses um, Docker, right? And on VSL1, this was just not working. So basically whatever I did, like even with the, like 
there was one way to set it up with a, a Windows side Docker machine, but ugh, that was not very nice. I uh, probably should have used yarn because I am using yarn everywhere. Let's actually see how fast the yarn is. I, I remember someone said that yarn for them was still faster than NPM, so we might as well compare that. So we previous install, um, uh, yeah, no, okay. We can try to install the same packages in the, um, what do you call it? 17 seconds, 18 seconds. Okay, so let's try to install the same packages with yarn here. So kill the node modules, npm install. Okay, time, I don't know, I mean, it measures time anyway, so let's do that. We got npm install. Uh, I don't know, it probably will hit cache. So I'm gonna run npm install twice and I'm gonna yarn, run yarn twice. And then we're gonna check this second time. Okay, 11, 12 seconds. So kill the node modules, run npm install again. So this again, this is going to be with cached modules, which is perfectly fine. It's probably going to be around 12 seconds again. It seems like it hit the cache first time as well. All right, there we go. 12 seconds. That's fine. And then uh, node modules, ram package lock. Yes, remove. Okay, yarn. A uh, nice terminal theme. This is the uh, dark, uh, dark whatever one. I don't remember the. I'm using it everywhere basically. Dark, what was the name? One Dark Pro. There you go. This is what it's called. Okay. Um, hey, Leonid, welcome to the stream. All right, 20 seconds, the call time, which I think is faster than the previous one uh, from npm and let's see what is going to go with the cache but okay this is like almost twice as fast as yeah okay it's still impressive all right um anyway let's go into the agroframe server and just run test so this uses docker heavily like it it runs the containers kills them moves them changes labels restarts whatever so that will load the system quite a bit I'm curious about the CPU and mem impact. So, I mean, the CPU so far, 50%. Uh, okay, that's pretty, pretty good. 50%. Six gigs of RAM. Okay, we're climbing there. Um, I'm sorry, I don't really know if I can increase the size of this thing. I don't think so, but it's basically at six gigs of RAM right now and CPU is fluctuating between like few, like five, 6% to... 50% in the most load. Um, I'm guessing it's gonna take some time because it's basically gonna pull a lot of images from the network. Uh, I'm gonna kill that. We're gonna see if it reclaims the memory later on. I'm gonna create a new tab. Make that a bit bigger, docker ps minus a. There we go, we got a bunch of, and we should have, yeah. So we now have a bunch of images. We now have a bunch of things running and, uh, oh God. There we go, uh, multi-core is used. I think so, I mean, otherwise it wouldn't load this much, right? Where's my where's my cores view? Yeah, it uses all the cores, so it's all good. Oh, God damn it, Docker Compose. I was thinking, what did I forget? I forgot Docker Compose. Okay, so Docker Compose test failed, which is perfectly fine. We need to install Docker Compose. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> Uh, overview of Docker Compose. Uh, how do I install Compose? There we go. Uh, Linux. Uh, yeah, sure. Oh, okay. It's literally just one file now. There's no like... I Can I install that somehow with tip or something so I can upgrade it easily? I mean, I guess I don't really use that too much. So I guess it's fine. Okay, cool. So actually most of the tests passed, so the compose test failed because I don't have compose installed. Makes perfect sense. But other than that, it actually seems to be working pretty damn well. Cool, yeah, okay. So there's basically just the compose issue. Let's do that. And uh, probably needs to kill exoframe traffic. And go to apt install. Is there is there a Docker Compose? I think it's like the thing. The thing about using the apt for things like this is that most of those are pretty outdated. 
Uh, Cyprus. Oh, yeah, that is a really good idea. We should test Cyprus. That is definitely, yeah, Carlos, thank you for reminding me. This is another thing I want to test. Permission. What do you mean permission denied? I just created you, goddammit. Uh, no. Da, 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 da. Where is it? There we go. So we want... We want that. So go here. Which, um, I mean, I can just do that, right? That should, that should fix it. Right, okay. That, that is a wrong command. There we go. Okay. Uh, Docker compose version. Now we're working. Okay, cool. Uh, let's try the exoframe test again. Ah, I cannot type apparently. Docker RM. So we need busybox and we need to remove this thing. God damn it. I cannot type for the life of me. Okay. Yarn test. So theoretically, now that we have composed, this should start working. Yes, let us try the next. So basically, if this passes, then I'm all good on the Docker side, because this is like the ultimate test. I think this was, uh, you know, testing Exoframe is like the most complex thing I ever did with Docker. Uh, so then the last thing we want to check is Cypress. That is a really good suggestion, and we should try doing that. You know what? While it's installing, let's just uh, utilize multitasking and do npm install cypress that yeah, no that's not uh it's just cypress right there we go so theoretically my computer should be powerful enough to allow doing two things at once hopefully so okay uh where's my vm okay so we're at seven gigs 30 percent cpu load not too bad so let's see the memory yeah okay the memory is like eh. Uh, okay, it's hammering my SSD. I mean, okay, at least it uses utilizes the SSD fully now because VSL one had problems with complete drive utilization. Okay, so this installed Cypress. Uh, let's fire up the. I think I already had the code open here, right? Yep, I did. Okay. Uh, so what did we need to do? I hell if I remember how to start. So we are gonna try that again. npm install save dev. That is whatever. Uh, open Cypress. Okay, so Cypress open is what we need to run. And then I'm just gonna that, right? And here, so what is what is going on here? To deploy a simple project from external image. I guess something failed during the pull or whatever. So there he is, received undefined. Okay, you know what? The Docker part works which is exactly what I was looking for. So that's all good. Docker kill. Yes, Docker. Move all of those and okay. Cool, we're good. Right, so let us try the Cypress. This would be another thing that didn't really work with VSL1 at all for me. So I know that some people somehow managed to launch it. But uh, Cypress is a UI app, right? So it literally runs the uh, browser for you in addition to itself. And so it will be interesting to see if that works. So if we do npm run open, it's probably going to say, yeah, okay, so we got, okay, so we need to install XVFB. Uh, right, uh, so yeah, I tried installing that on the SL1, never helped. But uh, we are going to install that anyway. So there's going to be a lot of UI libraries here, Blah, right? For gob sudo. And yes, here you go. I have my passwords. Uh, it's a 500 megabytes of stuff, which is, again, not that many. Okay, so we did that uh, caching environmental variables. Right, we do need to also set up um, SL2 X410. There's probably a guide of setting it up somewhere. Okay. Um, so X for 10 enable, allow public access. Okay. So this is one of the caveats is that yes, restart that with public access. There you go. So this is one of the caveats you have to allow public access because technically VSL two is not on the same uh, machine, right? It's a VM and, uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. So we do that. Aha, uh -huh, there's even a command here. Cool. Let me increase this. Vim, so we need to edit ZCRC again. 
I guess we'll put it above everything. X410 config. Right, so we did that. Display. Okay, cool. Um, I guess we have to restart our command line after that. Or, I mean, sourcing feels like probably easier to just restart it. <laughs> All right, come on now. That is a ton. Like, yeah, okay. I'm really happy with the speed of this thing. How do I check? Uh, so, and C minus V. Okay, so we can check by running some commands. That's good. Come on. Meanwhile, if you guys have any questions or other suggestions of things to test, feel free to throw them into the chat. Because I think for me, Cypress would basically be the last thing I want to test. And uh, so far, I'm really happy with how that turned out. Like, I, yeah, I think this is, I don't think I will open my Mac too much anymore at all if, I, if Cypress works. Because this was like the last thing I used my Mac for, this and Docker. So if Docker already works, that's great. If Cypress works, then... Pff, I don't need my MacBook anymore. It's probably gonna just sit here, collect dust. <laughs> All right, uh, or just be the backup machine in case my main uh, PC dies. All right, come on now. Installing that, installing this. Yeah, 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 come on, come on. All right. I wonder how the the official X11 integration will work with Windows because that like will they just literally add the X11 server like the Microsoft backed one? That would be amazing to be honest. Right, so we need to open a new shell. There we go. So this now should have display variable. Yes, and if I do and C minus V this display variable, we should be able to ping it. Uh, what do you mean missing? Oh. I probably don't need that, right? Come on. This project file is also accessible from Windows. Yes, because I, I mean, I just showed you, right? So it just mounts the, why does it not work? Connection to succeed it. 6,000 uh, connection review. Okay, so this seems, okay, let's just leave it. So the thing is that you can just literally call, so if we go to the projects, I can just say explorer exe and dot and it will open explorer right here. There's my files with node modules and everything and they are mounted as a network drive here. So, uh, wait, wait, no, wait, there you go. There's the VSL and there's the Ubuntu and there's, there's my full Ubuntu file system that is mounted as a network drive, which is uh, freaking amazing. Uh, that doesn't seem to be working. So run and see, step up, blah, 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 execute command is following. Okay, why are you not working? I'm doubt. Uh, I'm NPM, I mean, NPM linking, you won't see, the Windows side won't see it, right? So if I do NPM uh, list here, I won't see anything but NPM itself because PM minus GLS is what I want. I won't see anything because it's a Windows site and PM. I could do this. I could run VSL exoframe version, right? And this will execute, uh, no, no, what? Exoframe command not found. Um, I guess, oh, I guess maybe it runs the bash, not Z shell. Yeah, okay, so it probably runs the bash, so you need to tweak the bash profile, but you can run it through VSL if you want to, but why would you need something like this? Anyhow, let's try to figure out why the hell does this fail? Shared clipboard, scaling, Windows app. Okay, let me try to just restart it just in case. 410. So open this window again. Echo dollar display, right? So we got, right, so it's the same IP address. I guess it's the IP address of my Machine, right? Minus V. Yeah. What are you not liking here? There's our IP address and then there's 6,000. And it does not work for whatever reason. Um, Netcat, yeah, so Netcat should theoretically work, right? Grab name server. Okay, um, let's see, ABC resolve conf. Okay, yeah, this is our name server, right? Yeah, that's that looks fine. So why are you not working? Firewall, uh, might be. That's a good suggestion. Let's try to tweak. Um, where is my? 
Okay, uh, so we want x, where is it? x for 10, okay. So what was they saying? They were saying it should be private and public. Uh, to do, do, allow public act. Oh, oh, okay, so it wants public. God, I cannot speak. Um, why can't I change settings? There we go. Do that. Okay. Okay, I think now it should work. And no, what is happening? So let me let's have a look here. Da -da -da. Also check public access if you're concerned about blah blah blah. They display environment. No, it still doesn't work for whatever reason. Okay, let's try that again. Firewall. So what am I missing? So where's my X11 again? Uh, oh, there's actually three of them. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna allow all of that because why not? Right? Are we working now? There we go. Okay, cool. So it was firewall. <laughs> Probably should recheck and there's some old rules and just kill them. Okay, cool. So this works, uh, which means that we can now go into projects test, npm run open. And let's see if that actually works. Uh, failed to connect to the bot. Oh yeah, hey, there. It works, even though there's some messages. Got it. Um, it actually works. God damn, this is awesome. Okay, it is super tiny, but that's that's a different question. I don't know why is it so tiny. Well, you can increase the size of the window, so that's fine. Cool. It just works out of the box. This is pretty damn amazing. Like, what is this? This, what what, what browser are we using here? Oh, it uses Electron by default. Um, Settings, configuration. Uh, right, I guess you have to, I don't remember how did I set the uh, default runner to be a prom or whatever, but that's fine. We're okay. That's really cool. Okay, so I literally don't need my MacBook anymore. <laughs> All right, sweet. That is That is great to know. All right, that's, yeah, that's basically it. So I've set up everything that I typically use. If you have, uh, uh, let me try that again. If you guys have any questions or suggestions or things to try, uh, then do throw them into the chat. If no, we can just uh, wrap it up. Um, doesn't detect, I mean, I don't have any browsers uh, and no, it will of course not detect the Windows browsers by default, right? You probably can route them there somehow but I'm guessing it would be easier. But doesn't it come with like, um, with other browsers embedded? So you can just say it to install the Chrome or whatever, if I remember correctly. Da, 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 da. I press search for them. Oh, okay. I mean, I guess you can just install it then, right? So Cypress. But I think it installs it with them, right? Uh, when Cypress is initially run, you can choose Cypress, blah, blah, blah. Cypress auto. Yeah, so it detects available browsers, but you can basically ask it. I believe there was a way to basically say what you want from it. Okay, so the, theoretically we should be able to do that. Um, that is maybe a bit too big. Let's make it a bit smaller. Try that. Um, projects tests. npm run open. Okay. Unexpected can't run because you've entered invalid browser name. Chrome not. Okay, so you have to install the browser yourself. Um, you know what? That's not. Um, that's not a big problem. Like you can install Chromium if you want to. It's it's an Ubuntu. Obviously, that would drag a lot more things in addition, right? But yeah, okay, so it's gonna fail. Can you ask it to install the browsers for you? Oh, there you go, you can even provide the path. Oh, now I'm curious. Okay, wait a second. <laughs> I wanna try something. I'm gonna try something. Okay, npx cypress open browser mount c. No, uh, was a program files. Uh, was a Google? No. Hmm. Wait a second, where is my edge? Yeah, well, we can try Mozilla Firefox, why not? 
Would that actually work? Okay, so it have eaten the thing. Firefox profile cannot be loaded. Okay, so I guess... <laughs> well, it did pick up that it is Firefox 75 correctly. But the Firefox died with an error. So I guess there's probably a way to make that work. Um, wait a second, where's my... Um... I wonder where's the edge. Ah, whoa, 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 no, no, no. Windows, Microsoft, is there like here somewhere or something? Yeah, there we go, there's an edge application, MS edge exec. Did that work? Uh, okay, yeah. Right, I mean, I'm guessing there's a way to make that work, but this is like in the land of crazy, essentially. <laughs> I'm guessing it would be easier to just install the Chrome inside the VSL and, and be done with it or Chromium or whatever. It's not that that hard anyway, right? But it's kind of cool that you can just like pass it Firefox and it will kind of work. I'm guessing there's like a few more flags that you need to tweak to make it work, but holy crap. This is pretty cool, yeah. Okay, so any more questions, suggestions, things to try out? If not, uh, let's just wrap it up here. And uh, I am pretty damn happy with how it came out. So I still need to tweak a few things here and there. But uh, yeah, that sounds like a really solid uh, development environment. Let me have a look at the memory impact, by the way. Did it scale? But no, okay, it's 8.4 gigs of RAM. Seems like it doesn't scale down, which I guess is probably just retains it. And uh, yeah, okay. Well, doesn't seem like there's any more questions or suggestions. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you learned something new today. But VSL2 seems to be a pretty damn solid platform. I'm going to be working with it daily starting from uh, tomorrow, basically. And I will um, report back on how that goes. And we're going to be using it during all our consequent streams for all that kind of stuff. So there we go. You received 100 messages today. That is a lot of messages in the chat, guys. <laughs> but anyway... Thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for your continued support. I hope you learned something and I see you on the Saturday for BX 